Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Swing 101. In this episode, we're going to get an introduction into how buttons work. Uh, one of the coolest things about Swing is that it comes with so many different built-in uh, components, and it's not very hard for third parties to make their own. Uh, Swing comes with a bunch of different varieties of buttons, like your standard button. Uh, it also has checkbox buttons and radio buttons, the circular ones where you can only select one out of a choice. Uh, there are, of course, other ones that I'm forgetting, uh, but we're just going to learn how to work with those. Um, so to start out, we have this code right here. I'm going to comment out this part with the J label because we don't need it to show up right now, but I've, I'm, of course, not going to delete it. Uh, then let's go ahead and first start out by declaring a uh, simple button. And the way that you do this is you type in J button, name of the class, call this button, and set it equal to new J button. And then here's where you can give um, the title that shows up on the button. So in this case, it'll be click me. Uh, you'll notice that in Swing, all of the different components start with the letter J. So J button, J label, and so on. Uh, all the methods up here, set font, set foreground, and set alignment X, do still apply. Set font will set the font of the text. Um, set foreground will set the color of the text. And, you know, you can also set the X alignment of the button. Uh, there are some other things that you can do as well. So let me just quickly show you. Um, let's just go ahead and add the button and then run the program so you can take a look and see what it looks like. So you'll see that we have this one button. Now you'll notice that it takes up uh, pretty much the entire window, which is kind of strange. And uh, soon we'll get into how to actually manage that. But for now, you'll see that there is a button that says click me, and it looks like a standard button, except it's a bit large. Clicking on it does turn it gray, and uh, it is selected, so pressing space will also cause it to be clicked. Uh, there are some things that you can uh, do that are exclusive to the button like uh, set border painted so like how um, how it had that border if I turn that off then it just looks like regular like a regular J label but it works like a button so that's one of the cool things that you can do uh, but now I'm gonna show you how to actually listen for something to happen so that when they click the button something will happen and what you want to do is say button dot add action listener and then we're gonna go ahead and create a new action listener and then inside of there, it's going to have this action performed. Uh, swing works by having a variety of different methods or different listeners. So this is the action listener. There are listeners for the uh, mouse and the keyboard. Uh, but this one just listens for when an action happens. All method, all types of components have this, but they work a little bit differently. So in this case, the action occurs when the button's clicked, but other times the action might occur when something else happens. Uh, so inside of here this action performed method when the button is clicked this will be called so in this case uh, we'll just have it print out uh, good job because told them to click the button and when they click it it says good job so if I go ahead and click it you'll see that each time I click it it does print out good job to the console because the action listener was called this action perform method was called and then it printed out good job so that's how you actually um, work with standard buttons. Uh, the next thing that you can do is uh, there are some other types of buttons. I'll go ahead and comment that out for now. And we'll go ahead and do a J checkbox, I believe it's called. We'll just call it checkbox. and set it equal to a new J checkbox. It might be with a capital B. Yes, it is. So J checkbox with a capital B in box. And this represents, I'll go ahead and add it, so you go ahead and add checkbox, and you'll see that it has a checkbox. Now, in the constructor, like usual, um, you can have uh, the title that shows up. So now it'll say check me, and then you have the ability to check and uncheck it. Uh, you can do the same thing with the action listener. Um, if you wanted to so that when they click it it could have something happen what you might want to be more likely to do is say um, checkbox dot is selected 
And what that will do is, you know, if it's selected, it'll return true. If it's not, it'll return false. So if you're having some kind of like a form where you're asking someone to check something, you probably want to check and see um, which of the boxes were checked. Uh, so that's probably what you'd be more likely to do. So I'll just go ahead and um, write that in. Checkbox that is selected. So you can tell whether or not it's selected. Um, after that is going to be the... Um, uh, the radio button, I think it's called a J radio button. Let me see if I'm right. Yes, it is. So it's called a J radio button. That's the one that kind of looks like a circle. I'll go ahead and show that to you. Uh, radio button. Uh, so if we go ahead and take a look. Oops, I ran it twice. But as you can see, it does have a radio button where you can only select uh, you know, one of the things out of the choice options. And in this case... Um, so we'll say fill me since it kind of looks like you're filling the circle when you click. And then if I go ahead and do it, you'll see that that works. Uh, now, one interesting thing with the radio buttons, the way that these are normally meant to denote that only one option can be chosen, whereas a checkbox is multiple options can be shown. Uh, so if I go ahead and add like a second one, uh, so if I go ahead and add like a new, so I'm just going to go ahead and instantiate this right here. I don't need to store a reference to it. Um, another one. So if I go ahead and add this, uh, then you'll see it does say another one, and, uh, yeah, it's the layout manager. Hang on one second, I'm just going to quickly add one line of code. Add this one line of code. Uh, don't worry about it. We will definitely get to this in a very soon, in a video that comes very soon. Uh, it just has to do with layout managers and the default layout manager, I guess, does not like having multiple components. So when you go ahead and run it, you'll probably only see one of the radio buttons, uh, but don't worry about it because we're going to uh, get to it soon in a with the layout manager so I just have this line in here so I can show it to you uh, but if I check this see I have the ability to check both of these even though normally you'd only want one to be able to be used so what you want to do is there's a button group class and we're gonna call this radio group and we're gonna set it equal to a new button group and then this button group basically it's exactly what it sounds like a group of buttons and then that controls what can be um, selected. So basically what we can do here is we can say um, radio group dot add radio button and then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this again and I'm just gonna call this one uh, another one and I'm gonna call this radio button 2 and then we're gonna add radio button 2 and then we're gonna add it to the frame. So if I go ahead and do this now Oh, there we go. If I go ahead and do this now, you'll see that um, only one can be selected. If I click on one, then if I click on one and the other one's selected, it'll unselect it in order to work. And then within the um, radio group, uh, there are a couple of methods in here, or the button group, rather. Um, you know, you can clear the selection. Uh, you can get the current um, selection. That's just the model. Um, you can check to see if a specific button is selected, and then you can set a specific selected, uh, whether or not a specific uh, option is selected or not. So uh, there are different uh, methods within the button group. You can also, I guess, apply that to any other kind of button, uh, but uh, other than a radio button, I don't know if it would really make too much sense. So that is all for this video. I'll go ahead and uncomment this since I do have that uh, layout manager. Don't worry about it. Uh, you can you can use that one line of code in your testing, uh, but we will get into layout managers soon. If I go ahead and run this, you'll see that we now have the hello world. We have click me, which says good job, the checkbox, and then the two uh, radio buttons where only one of them can be filled. So those are pretty much mostly everything that you're going to need to know about uh, buttons and how they work. Uh, so as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon uh, with some more videos. Bye, guys.